I made it very clear. At the moment it arrived as a nation where we face deep racial inequities in America and system, systemic racism that has plagued our nation for far, far too long. I said that over the course of the past year that the blinders have been taken off the nation, the American people. But what many Americans didn't see or had simply refused to see couldn't be ignored any longer. Those uh, eight minutes and 46 seconds that took George Floyd's life opened the eyes of millions of Americans and millions of people around all over the world. It was the knee on the neck of justice, and it wouldn't be forgotten. It stirred the conscious and of tens of millions of Americans. And in my view, it marked a turning point in this country's attitude toward racial justice. When uh, the six-year-old six -year daughter, Gianna, who I met with when I met with the family, I leaned down to say hi to her, and she said, looked at me, and she said, Daddy changed the world. That's what Gianna said, his daughter. Daddy changed the world. And I believe she was right. So Tamir Rice and countless other children who were killed by police weren't good enough to change policy, procedures, and or criminal investigations against police. But a one-time porn actor who was arrested ditching a white substance is the savior of all? What changed? The George Floyd Act only works if cops reported each other. Majority of that act put responsibility on police officers to go against the oaths they made to the police department, not citizens. And the death of an unarmed black man. George Floyd! It has been incredibly difficult to, to prosecute a police officer successfully. I'm here because I'm sick and tired of seeing black men and women be killed and nothing be done about it. We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro is the victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. Jonathan Farrell was unarmed when he died, just a month shy of his 25th birthday. Now that officer, Randall Carrick, is charged with voluntary manslaughter. A mistrial was declared in the case of a white police officer who shot and killed an unarmed black man. There were protests outside the court after the mistrial was announced Friday. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Unarmed! Don't shoot! Unarmed! Don't shoot! Death of Eric Garner of a heart attack on Thursday. The father of six can be heard on the tape saying repeatedly, I can't breathe! I can't breathe! There needs to be prosecution. That's what this is all about. Many people simply cannot understand why the grand jury did not indict when they could actually see video of what went down between that New York police officer and Eric Garner. Michael Brown, an unarmed 18-year-old, was shot and killed during a struggle with a Ferguson police officer. Sir Darren Wilson will not be indicted. It's the feeling among many of these people that black lives don't matter. Not one reason did this grand jury find to indict. That's what I want to know. I have a black child. Chicago police officer Jason Van Dyke shot and killed 17-year-old Laquan McDonald. For the first time in 35 years, a Chicago police officer is charged with first-degree murder. <laughs> That officer found guilty of second degree murder. Very unusual, very important one. It just goes to show you how serious that I am about my life and all these other lives that are out here that are scared of the police. Kill 12 year old Tamir Rice on Sunday. Tamir Rice was playing with a pellet gun when officers arrived. One of them opened fire within two seconds. Grand jury decided not to indict the two officers who shot and killed 12 year old Tamir Rice. Cleveland's prosecutor calls it a tragedy. Thing of the death of Freddie Gray. All lives matter, but you got to think about who dying out here. Prosecutors in Baltimore dropped all remaining charges against three police officers in the Freddie Gray case. Samuel DeBose was shot in the head Sunday after being pulled over for a missing license plate. Officer Raymond Tensing has now been charged with murder and voluntary manslaughter. The only reason why Tensing is being charged is because there was a body cam. Yeah. Yes. 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 Now those charges have been dismissed. <sighs> the death of Alton Sterling. African-American man killed by police in Louisiana. The Louisiana Department of Justice cannot proceed with a prosecution 
All we want is the same justice that they put against us whenever we go through certain trials and tribulations. Philando Castile, a supervisor at a school cafeteria where kids loved him. Police officer Geronimo Yanez shot Castile to death while he was in the car with his girlfriend and her four-year-old daughter. Jurors found Yanez was reasonable in his decision to shoot and kill Philando Castile during a traffic stop last July. Under the circumstances, just because he was a police officer, that makes it okay. year old Terrence Crutcher was killed on Friday when local officers responded to a call of a stalled vehicle in the middle of the road. Twelve jurors found a TPD officer, Betty Shelby, not guilty of manslaughter in the shooting of Terrence Crutcher. The death of 22-year-old Stefan Clark sparked nationwide protests. Clark was hit 20 times. He was in his grandparents' backyard at the time. This is what we have to do to not only this young man, but those who are going to come behind him. Police officers will not face charges saying they did not break any laws when they shot Stefan Clark in his grandparents' backyard. And the same cop who killed him is back on the streets patrolling other communities, running through other people's backyards. I, I, I'm uneasy with that. Anger overnight over the shooting death of 26-year-old Botham Jean in his own apartment. Former Dallas police officer Amber Geiger is waking up this morning behind bars. She was found guilty yesterday of murdering her neighbor in his own home. Tatiana is her name and everyone is seeing that name on social media. There she is. She was up playing video games with her nephew when she was shot and killed by former Fort Worth police officer Aaron Dean. The Fort Worth police officer who shot at Tatiana Jefferson in her own home has been formally charged with murder. COVID-19 has further ripped a, a path of destruction through every community in America, but no one has been spared. But the devastation in communities of color has been nothing short of stunning. Just look at the numbers. 40 percent of frontline workers, nurses, first responders, grocery store workers, are Americans of color, and many are still living on the edge. One in 10 black Americans is out of work today. One in 11 Latino Americans is out of work today. One in seven households in America, about one in four black, one in five Latino households in America, report that they don't have enough food to eat in the United States of America. Black and Latino Americans are dying of COVID-19 at rates nearly three times that of white Americans. And it's not white Americans' fault, but just a fact. Look, a pandemic doesn't play favorites. Nor will I. Black and Latino Americans are dying of COVID-19 at rates nearly three times that of white Americans. Look, a pandemic doesn't play favorites. Nor will I. And the Americans now know it, especially younger Americans. One of the reasons I'm so optimistic about this nation is that the, today's generation of young Americans is the most progressive, thoughtful, inclusive generation that America has ever seen. And they are pulling us toward justice in so many ways, forcing us to confront the huge gap in economic, excuse me, economic inequity between those at the top and everyone else, forcing us to confront the existential crisis of climate, and yes, forcing us to confront systemic racism and white supremacy. It's just been weeks since all of America witnessed a group of thugs, insurrectionists, a political extremist, and white supremacists violently attack the capital of our democracy. The capital siege had nothing to do with white supremacy or social injustice of African Americans. Sister Angela Stanton said, why do you care about white people storming the capital? How does that impact your communities? As I was scrolling through the comments, I was 100% sure I was going to find they did it, I want to do it Two comments. White America could use that same idiotic logic on you, black America, when you burned down your own neighborhoods, your own businesses, and cops barely even stopped you. You ran in and out of mom and pop stores looting. Now you pissed because your temper tantrum asses can't burn down D.C. unhindered. And so now, now's the time to act. It's time to act because that's what the faith and morality call us to do. Across nearly every faith, the same principles hold. 
We're all God's children. We should treat each other as we would like to be treated ourselves. And this is time to act, and this time to act is because it's what the core values of this nation call us to do. And I believe the vast majority of Americans, Democrats, Republicans, and independents, share these values and want us to act as well. So after 15 minutes of going on about changing, defeating systematic racism, black America will finally get what they so proudly took the social media and the polls for, right? This first executive order is a memorandum for the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development to redress our nation's and the federal government's history of discriminatory housing practices and policies. Next, next executive order is reforming the incarceration system by eliminating the use of privately operated criminal detention facilities. Third executive order is a memorandum for the heads of the executive departments and agencies. Tribal consultation and strengthening nation to nation relationships. And the last executive order is condemning and combating racism, xenophobia, and intolerance against Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in the United States. I think the country's ready, and I know this administration's ready. <laughs> so what happened? Where is the police reform? The social injustice reform, the over-policing of black neighborhoods. Where is any laws acts addressing the social injustices in your communities? I said it before and I'll say it again. Until you get back to following the laws of Yah, instead of following the laws of the heathen, everything since 1964 civil rights movement is going to fail. Let me put this in a color purple context. Since the Holy Spirit is feminine. She represents Yah's commandments, laws, and statutes. And black America is mister. You think your stiff neck ways and to choose the ways of your oppressor will prosper you. I promise you, until you do right by me, everything you think about is going to crumble. Who you think you is? You can't curse nobody. Look at you. You're black. You're poor. You're ugly. You're a woman. You're nothing at all. You do right by me. Everything you even think about gonna fail. <laughs>